In this lesson, we're going to look at reference table F, and it's going to compare how we can identify soluble compounds from insoluble compounds. To begin, a soluble substance is an ionic compound that, when placed in water, will completely dissociate into its individual ions. This means when you place it into water, it will form an aqueous solution. Now, this is going to be different from our insoluble compounds that you can see on the right-hand side of reference table F. Soluble compounds are always found on the left side of reference table F, but however, there is exceptions to both of these rules. If you form an insoluble compound, it will poorly dissolve into water, meaning that a majority of the compound will remain behind in the solid phase. This means when you look at your beaker of water after adding an ionic compound, there will be solid matter sitting on the very bottom forming a suspension or forming a pure crystal. Let's take, for example, sodium chloride. If we place sodium chloride, which contains a group 1 ion, and a halide, the Cl- ion, it will dissociate and dissolve completely into water. However, if we were to add another compound into water, we might get a different result. If we were to use, for example, another halide called lead 2 iodine, we could see that all halides are soluble, but when halides are combined with either silver, lead, or mercury, they will form an insoluble product. This means you'll see it on the bottom of a beaker because it will not dissolve into water. Reference table F is also great for identifying different types of compounds and whether or not they will be soluble or insoluble. Let's look at our halides first. We can see in the first three models that I've marked for you the iodine, which is a halide. Let's make predictions on whether or not these compounds will dissolve. Our first one is potassium iodide. It will be soluble in water, meaning that it will completely ionize into an aqueous solution. The second one is PBI2. We can see that iodine is soluble, but because it has the PB plus 2 ion, it will form an insoluble product. Our last one is calcium iodine. This one is also soluble because all iodines are soluble in water. Now let's look at our phosphates. Now we can see our three examples of phosphates. All phosphates are insoluble. The first one is going to be calcium phosphate. Calcium phosphate is going to be insoluble because calcium is neither a group one ion nor ammonia. The second one is ammonium phosphate. We can see in the exceptions for phosphate that it will be soluble if ammonia is attached. And our last one is silver one phosphate. Silver is neither a group one ion nor is it the ammonia polyatomic, so it is insoluble. Our last group is gonna be the hydroxides. All hydroxides are insoluble. However, the exceptions are with group 1 ions, calcium, barium, strontium, and ammonium. That means sodium hydroxide will dissolve completely into water. Our second hydroxide compound is a calcium hydroxide, and we can see in the exceptions rule that calcium ions, when attached to hydroxides, will form soluble compounds. The last one is iron 3 hydroxide. Iron is neither a group 1 ion nor ammonia, 